I'm Julie Benz, I'm the Director of Communications for NYC Outward Bound Schools, and we're here today at Mills, which is an NYC Outward Bound Middle School on Staten Island, and today Mills is celebrating No One Eats Alone Day, which so happens to be Valentine's Day, and No One Eats Alone Day was started by the nonprofit Beyond Differences, and it's meant to combat social isolation. So luckily, at all NYC Outward Bound Schools, we have a structure in place called CREW, through our teams of 10 to 12 students that meet daily throughout the school year. So CREW is really a structure in place that automatically combats social, social isolation. Um, and the programming that's going to be happening here at Mails, starting with No One Needs Alone Day, is really meant to enforce that. So we're really happy to be here today and I think our students are doing a great job. They're going to be handing out candy to, to every student individually um, and just making sure that there's a community of belonging uh, and acceptance here at Mills. Hello, I'm Noelle. And I'm Isla. And today we're doing a Beyond Differences event for No One Is Alone or Eats Alone. 
And in this event, we'll be passing out Hershey Kisses to students along the school, and it would basically make them feel valued during Valentine's Day. We also have this newsletter that we passed out that um, shouts out students and has many stories on it. <laughs> and as we're passing them out, we gave some inspirational quotes along with the Hershey Kisses, and we just want everyone to feel valued because some people might not get Valentine's on Valentine's Day, and it's important that everyone is valued and doesn't feel socially isolated. Basically, today we're just going to like give out newsletters, and on the newsletters we put like a lot of different things, and. This is not our first school newsletter, but we're just going to bring back that habit. And we really want people to feel valued by reading them, because during lunch or just during class when they have breaks, not a lot of people do much. Like, not everyone has friends in their class, and people might feel really alone. And we don't want people to feel that way, because it's yeah. really not a good way for anyone to feel, no matter who they are and how they are. So even if they're not the best or nicest kid, they still deserve not to feel alone, because it's the worst feeling anyone could and in our newsletters, we included fortunes and other time-consuming activities such as crosswords, too. And we even have little quotes of the day or week that we like to call them. And we really just want them to sit there, read them, and maybe smile. Because that's the best thing for them to do in the free time. Just smile. So we are here at Males in Staten Island today, um, and we are celebrating an event called No One Eats Alone. We've decided to revise the event. We've done it before in the past. This year we're calling it No One Eats Alone, but we're also focusing on No One Sits Alone and No One Is Alone. And what that means to us here at Males is that it's more than just feeling um, isolated in a cafeteria. We have a lot of structures here that make our students feel really supported. For example, we have Crew as an NYC Outward Bound School. So students are in a small group for three years with a teacher that they stay with, and they feel kind of like a family. So knowing that, we notice that it's more than just the cafeteria that we need to focus on, that we want to make sure kids feel comfortable in all our spaces. And Crew is one of the places that helps us to do that, but our students wanted to do more. So today what we did, um, instead of just focusing on the cafeteria, we had students create these little bags of candy. Hershey's Kisses that are purple, which is the color of Beyond Differences and the color of Social Isolation. And since that's what we're trying to combat, we created these little gift bags to make students feel welcome and seen. So we have about 450 students here, plus staff. Um, the kids really wanted to make sure that staff was included and appreciated and loved as well. So we made over 500 baggies. We distributed the candy to all students and all staff um, the period prior to lunch. And we kind of set the expectation that, listen, like we are a family here, we are a community, and everyone here should be valued, accepted, and loved. So once we did that, we also handed out a newsletter. The students created something they called the Purple Press. And in that newsletter are some um, tips and strategies, some things they could do together, like crossword puzzles, or things that they can discuss, like um, shout outs and basketball scores, just things that could really bring us together as a community and unite the kids instead of divide them. So we had a really successful day here. The kids are really proud and I'm really proud of them. And we're super thankful to Beyond Differences for training our kids. We worked with them last year and this year we are just continuing that work and building upon it to make it fit our community and our space. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I am Catherine Garlisi and I am 13 years old. I'm in the seventh grade and I'm here at the site of the Beeping Egg Hut. Right now it's all calmed down a little bit, but basically what we did was we had eggs that made loud beeping noises so that children that are visually impaired and blind could enjoy an Easter egg hunt, which I'm sure for many of you, you it's a luxury we really don't think about, but it's a tradition that some kids can't partake in because they can't see the eggs. So this gave a lot of kids some opportunities. And we found, I found out about this online because I was searching for things that I could do for my Girl Scout Silver Award project, which is a very high honor in the Girl Scout community. So how did it go today? Tell me how it started out. Well, it started out with just us getting everything set up. We set up a DJ and some sand art activities and some face painters. And we even had a bunny in a costume and then and then after about an hour, we went and we, hello, this is a bunny. We have, him, we have him walking around. And then after an hour, we had 30 minute rotations of kids coming out here and, make, and we would start up the beeping eggs and then they would come out and just find them. And we even had some special golden eggs that got, that got huge bag, baskets of prizes. So yeah. It went really well. Do you, um, do you hope to make this a tradition? Do you hope to do it every year? I, I definitely hope to make this a tradition because this is actually, even though this has, has been done before, it's never been done in New York specifically. So I think it was a smashing success this time, so there's no reason to not do it again. It was really fun and I think some of the kids, I hope some of the kids come away with some good memories. Thank you. Thanks. Um, this was a total blast, and I hope that we can do it again. Hi, my name is Grace Garlisi. I'm the volunteer coordinator for the 2019 Beeping Egg Hunt. Um, this is an egg hunt for the visually impaired. The eggs beep so that the kids can participate and they can hear the eggs. We put together this egg hunt because Holly Bonner, who had the idea for it in the first place, wanted every kid, including the visually impaired, to participate in Easter egg hunts and have fun. And it's a lot of fun so far. Everyone's been having a blast. So what have you done here? To, what have you, you cause I, when I spoke to you before, you said you had to put out the eggs. Yes, yeah, so we've been putting out the eggs over by the field to, you know, for the kids to find. We've been hiding them, which is a pretty big job. There are a lot of eggs, thousands of eggs. And we've been putting the beeping eggs out for the visually impaired so that they can participate too. And we've been, we have other activities. We have a bunny foam crown that kids can make. And we have a sand art necklace that kids can also make. So it's been a lot of fun. Thanks everyone for coming and I hope to see everyone here next year. Happy Easter. Hi, my name is Holly Bonner. I'm the creator of Blind Motherhood and the Visually Impaired Education Program on Staten Island. And we are here at the second annual Beeping Egg Hunt. We started this event last year because we really wanted to have an opportunity for children who are blind and visually impaired on the island to experience a traditional Easter egg hunt. And it was wildly successful. This year, we've actually added not only members of the ATF, but members of the NYPD who are coming to help us. ATF members build eggs that actually beep, so that beeping noise allows kids who are blind or visually impaired to find the eggs, not by sight, but by using their hearing. So it has become kind of a tradition now on the islands that children who are blind or disabled look forward to coming to this with us to celebrate Easter with us each year. We're grateful to the ATF, members of the NYPD, who've helped us have a really successful year this year, and we're hoping to make this a yearly tradition on Staten Island. So look for us here next April for the third annual Beeping Egg Hunt. Eleanor, welcome to the show. Good morning, Helene. Thank you. Okay, so tell us, Lenore, what made you decide to write a children's book about a grumpy, grumpy grandpa? It really happened by accident, Helene. Uh, four years ago, my older grandson was going on uh, three, and my younger grandson was going on two, and my husband was grumpy, and 
children came, and before I knew it, he was fine. He was happy, he was smiling, he was laughing. So when they left, I just took out a piece of paper and I haphazardly wrote some things down. I put it in my drawer. Last year during COVID, I decided to clean up my drawer and I found this little makeshift book and I said, oh my goodness. So I had to add my two granddaughters, uh, Sophia and Lily, and then I had to look for a illustrator and I found a wonderful person uh, in Sacramento, California. We just hit it off. She never even saw John, but her depiction of him is perfect. And before you know it, one book led to two and three and four and five. That's the story. You wrote these beautiful books and you decided that you were going to donate everything to a special charity. Yes. Tell us about that charity. Okay, one night my husband and I were watching TV and on a commercial came the uh, Operation Smile. And uh, I was just spellbound. You know, we have four beautiful grandchildren and I wanted to give thanks to God for giving us these four beautiful children by helping kids that have no voice, have no shot in life. Uh, if it weren't for this wonderful organization, which for less than an hour and $240 each, transforms a child from having uh, a cleft palate or other facial deformity to being perfectly normal and having a life full of hope and promise instead of being shunned by their families and put away and hidden. So I read all your books and I enjoyed every one of them, but one of them really stood out. Um, I really enjoyed the Christmas book. And the part I love most is when the grandchildren gave the grandpa a box of love, hugs, and kisses. This is one of the greatest things I think that anyone can receive as a gift. I agree, Helene. I wanted to teach the, my readership, especially the very young children, that the best things in life are not material things. They're things that come from the heart, especially love. Love changes our world. And the love that these young children give their grandpa in every book, but especially the Christmas book, transforms yeah. him from being a grumpy grandpa to being a happy grandpa. And that's, that's my message, that love conquers all, love changes the world. And even at their simple state of life, they can give the best gift of all. Right, and that's so true. The best gift of all is one from the heart right. and not from a store or with a high price. That's right. That's right. Okay, so Lenore, tell us about yourself. Okay, well, I've been an educator now for um, 30 years. Um, I taught in the public school system, mostly as a science teacher, which I absolutely loved. I also was an adjunct for six years. I currently teach uh, the mentally challenged adults at uh, a, a grant program at the College of Staten Island. And I just love teaching. I love teaching now my grandchildren. We do remote learning. I've been helping them with that. And I just, you know, you can take the teacher out of the classroom, but you can't take the classroom out of the teacher. I just absolutely love it. Um, so I see that you are, everything you, you've done is with kids. You yes. have a love of helping yes. kids in school and teaching and yes. your Operation Smile to give kids confidence and feeling good about themselves, which is just, just, just a beautiful, beautiful thing that you're doing. Thank you. Um, so I want to know, will there be more sequels to The Grumpy Grumpy Grandpa? <laughs> yes, I hope so. I have The Grumpy Grumpy Grandpa's birthday surprise. That's the next book. Then it's The Grumpy Grumpy Grandpa's special Thanksgiving. And then I'm going to venture out of the series and, um, and do... Uh, a book about a dog who saved our lives uh, seven years ago. Okay, I, I didn't know that. Yes. Um, tell us, that's very interesting, and I would love to hear more about this dog. Okay, his name was Spike. He was a Yorkshire Terrier. He was between seven and eight pounds. We had just gotten him, and one uh, late morning, uh, I came back from the mall, and he was barking furiously. So my husband thought maybe he had to go uh, to the bathroom because we really didn't know his habits yet. We only had him three days. So I started to go down the steps and he really started barking louder and just, I just opened up the garage door where our washer and dryer was and I saw the dryer in flames. I closed the door, I yelled down to my husband. He came down with pots of water. My daughters woke up. They came down with pots of water. But little did we know that opening up the 
the top, the uh, garage door and closing it added oxygen to the flame. So we thought we got all the fire out, but the fire started to uh, travel up the walls. But needless to say, if it wasn't for Spike, we probably would have been sealed in the house. And the only way out of the house would have been to jump from the second floor uh, terrace. So he really did save our lives. He was, uh, to some people, he was really grumpy. He didn't like the world, but he loved us to death. And I want to do his story, definitely. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that dog is a hero. He is a hero. He is a hero. He is. <laughs> Other than a book about your doggy, Will there be any other different books other than The Grumpy Grumpy Grandpa? I don't know, Helene. I'm also thinking about taking each grandchild and doing a book with uh, John, you know, The Grumpy Grumpy Grandpa, and each of the, the grandchildren because they're so remarkable. They're, they're really full, wonderful human beings, and I would love to showcase each of them with John. That's terrific. And, of course, you will... Um, all these books, of yes, course, will be donated to the, the charity of Operation, Operation Smile. Smile. Yes. Well, Lenore, it has been a pleasure doing this interview with you. Um, you. You are a beautiful person. Thank you. Um, I look forward to reading all your books and seeing what you have in store for the future. Thank you Thank very you. much, Helene. Thank you for your time. Thank you.